Yeah, hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial about After Effects and eye expressions. And this year, once again, is the project we are looking at. And in the first part, we created here these moving sliders that automatically animate according to the music. And now in the second part, we want to create this volume meter that you can see here on the right. Okay, to start with this, um, this is a project we created last time, and at the beginning I want to do a bit of uh, cleaning up. Of course we could uh, start continuing working in this composition here, but it already ha it has quite a few layers and so on, and to make everything a little bit uh, more clean, I just take this composition and drag it here into a new composition, and this new composition I then call uh, volume meter. Yeah. And now in this volume meter we just have the cr uh, things we created last time as a background layer. And to make everything also a little bit faster, because I'm on a quite slow machine here, um, I set a proxy for this one, set proxy file. So I rendered out the project last time into this mixer.rb file, and I just choose this, and now uh, After Effects uses this rendered file instead of this composition, which makes everything here in my new composition now act much faster. Yeah? Okay, now let's start creating this uh, these uh, volume meter elements. For this I go to Layer, New, Solid, and I want here a solid of uh, width 50 and height 20, it's already correct and such a green color, and I call this here uh, whatever uh, meter. Huh? Okay, and I duplicate this element now six times. So edit, duplicate, you can click Ctrl D instead. So I keep it selected and s Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D. Now I have six copies and I select them all and move them here where the volume meter should be placed. And then I take the first one and move it up. By the way, if you keep the shift key pressed, you can move in only one direction, which is quite handy here. And then I select all of them and go to align and choose here under distribute this one. And now you can see they are all nicely distributed here as we want them to be. Okay, now the first two should have different colors. Yeah, the first one should be red. So I go to Effects and Presets and choose here the Fill effect. Drag it on here. And then I also drag it on the second element. And on the second one I choose another color. Of course this is a matter of taste, yeah, but maybe I choose some something orange here. Okay, now we have these elements and of course they do not animate yet. And what you've learned already in the first part is that if you want to animate your stuff according to music, what you need is to go to Animation, Keyframe Assistant, Convert Audio into Keyframes. Yeah? If I do this I have here my Audio Amplitude layer which represents the volume of my elements. To show you an alternative of this I can of course delete this here again. And since I have already such a layer in the main composition, yeah, with the same uh, audio, so it's also created from this WAV file here, I can take this audio amplitude, just edit copy and edit paste it here. Yeah, in principle, with eye expressions, it's also no problem to link to elements in other compositions, so there's not even the need to, to, to copy here something, but you could go to this one and directly link to these val vol val values, but I want to make it all a little bit simpler yeah, and a little bit more local here, such that I do not have to switch between the compositions all the time. Therefore, I just place here a copy of the audio amplitude. Anyway, what are we going to doing with it? So here again, we have this effect both channels, yeah, which is basically a slider that contains the current volume of the music and that we used to animate these sliders here according to. And now we use eye expressions, namely we go to the library and choose the linear link eye expression. Yeah. Linear link because the linear linking is always good to animate something according to a linear or 1D value, or in other words to a slider like this uh, volume slider here. And we are going to use the linear link 1D 
because we want to animate this time not a 2D property like these positions of the sliders we had in the first part of the tutorial, but we want to animate in this case the opacity. Yeah, we want to animate those here as uh, the opacity of these elements, and since opacity is a 1D value, we choose this one here. Okay. What do we need to tell it? So the first thing we need to tell the eye expression is what signal do you want to react on? This is this link to slider thing here. So we select our audio amplitude and click here and now this eye expression is reacting to this signal to these keyframes here. And then we need to tell it, okay, from this signal here, from these uh, volume um, keyframes, what is their minimum and their maximum value? And if we scroll here through these elements, we can see that yeah, the loudest thing is something like this first keyframe here. Yeah, so we can see say roughly there is no value ab above 60. So we can say the maximum is 60, and the minimum is zero. Yeah, when there is uh, completely silence, this slider has a value of zero. The next thing we need to tell is what is the minimum and the maximum of the values uh, of your result, so of the opacity of these elements here. We keep this to zero, so when it's uh, when the volume is zero, they should be completely invisible. Transparency zero, yeah, and for the maximum, we want to have a value of hundred, so completely visible. If we apply this now to the opacity of all these elements here, so I select them all and click T on the keyboard to reveal the transparency or opacity. And then I select the opacities and then I click apply. Ah, and now I haven't selected the topmost two, so I select them also and click on apply. And if we now look at the RAM preview, you can see what we have achieved so far. Uh, they are appearing and disappearing according to the music but they all behave exactly identical, yeah, because they have exactly the same eye expression applied to them. Yeah, so not yet exactly what we want to have. And so, since we want to be uh, to, to uh, everything of them, to, uh, or you want all of them to behave a little bit different, we have to adjust here this input uh, slider ranges. Yeah, so. Let's say we have in total here a range of 0 to 60 and we want to distribute it over these in total 6 elements. Yeah? This means when the volume is 10, the first one should be visible and when, this, uh, when it's 20, the second is visible, 30, the third is visible, 40, the fourth, 50, the fifth and only if the volume achieves really 60, this red one should also be completely visible. This is very easy doable by just adjusting these minimum and maximum uh, values. So we do not have to be honest in the sense that we really need to give here the exact values, maximum and minimum that these slide, this slider here has, but we just need to tell, okay, at which uh, minimum and maximum should the output have this minimum and maximum value. Yeah? In other words, we can go here to the first one and say, okay, we assume the slider has only a range between 0 and 10. This means at 10 or anything above, here this 100 is already reached. This means at a volume of 10, this one is completely visible. Yeah? So we apply it to only this one. Then we go to the second one and say, okay, from 10 on it should start to become visible and it should be fully visible at 20. Yeah? This means everything below 10, it is completely invisible and between 10 and 20 it slowly becomes visible. We apply this, then we go to the third one and go here similar fashion, oh sorry, from 20 to 30 is the range that this one should react on, apply this one here from 30 to 40, apply this one here from 40 to 50, apply, and this one here from 50 to 60, apply. And if you now look at the result, you can see that it exactly behaves as we want it. Yeah? So it slowly starts, each element here slowly starts to appear or disappear in the correct uh, volume level, and you have exactly what a normal um, volume meter here should behave. Yeah. 
So another small tip, if you, for example, do not want these here to fade in slowly, yeah, yeah, like, for example, between 50 and 60, this last red one slowly becomes visible, but if you want to really them to jump between uh, being not visible at all and being visible completely, you can also choose here the same number. Yeah, If you put here 50 and here 50, it means for 50 and everything above, it uh, becomes um, completely visible and for everything below it is completely invisible. But anyway, I'm not going to show you this now, but yeah, so this is already the end of this uh, second part and I hope you join in again for the third part where you will learn something about the linear link time remap I expression, which you can use if you have movements like here these dots around this thing that we are going to add that are not uh, linear, yeah, that are not moving in a straight line, but you can also move stuff uh, yeah, in curved uh, fashions, for example, according to uh, the music. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this part of the tutorial and that you also join in again for the third part.